In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the future value function in Excel in order to figure out how much um, a series of annual deposits are going to give you in a certain amount of time. So if you have a savings or retirement plan, say you want it uh, for 40 years and you'll get 5% and you deposit so much every year, how much is it going to be worth? So this is a very basic example and it's showing you how to use the future value. What I have here, I have two sets. I have doing this annually right here. So what it's going to do is say you deposit so much every year at the end of the year or the beginning of the year. And then down here I assume that you deposit so much monthly. The point is just to show you what you have to change to change the amount of periods. Now here I have the years, so how many years you want uh, to have it, uh, I guess, vesting. The rate you think you'll get, the starting amount, so the starting amount is how much you already have in the account or the retirement plan when you uh, start the calculation, and here the annual deposits. Now really the only place you need the formula is to get the value over here. So that's the only place you're going to have and uh, it's going to be a future value formula. So let me go ahead and show you how to calculate the value of a series of investments in the future. I'm going to delete this, zoom in. Now all you need to do is equals FV for future value, open parentheses. Now remember up here it's all annual, it's all yearly. So the first thing we want is a rate. It's going to be in this cell here, comma. The next thing we want is the number of periods, and that's going to be equal to the years here. The next thing we want is our payment. So how much we're going to pay into it every period. That'll be our annual deposit. And the next thing is the present value. Now the present value uh, in terms of the savings and retirement plan is going to be the starting amount in the account. So how much you already have in there is going to be the present value. So I'm simply going to click this cell here. And the last thing is the type of investment. Are you going to be putting your money in at the beginning of every year or at the end of every year? If you're going to do it at the end of every year, simply put a zero there. And that, by the way, is default. If you leave that blank, it's going to default to assuming that you put your money in at the end of every year. Close the parentheses, hit enter, and now we have zero. Now, down here, we have the future value if we put our money in at the beginning of the year. So I'll show you that the only difference here is the zero is now a one. Everything else is the same. So let's go ahead and try this out. See how it works. We're going to have an investment for 40 years. We think it'll give us, say, 5%. We have 10,000 in the bank right now. And we're going to put 1,500 in every year for the next 40 years. So one thing to note, notice before I explain it, this is red and I let you see that on purpose because it's uh, one of the values, future or present value, has to be negative for the calculation to work. But the point is that really is a positive number. The way we get it to look positive is before the FV function simply put a minus or a negative sign in there, hit enter, and it becomes positive. Now also notice that uh, if you put your money at the end of the year, you have less money at the end of the 40 years than you do if you deposit the money at the beginning of the year. Now that's simple time value of money because you get to earn interest, more interest on the money if you put it in at the beginning of the year than if you do at the end of the year. But anyway, that's how you can calculate uh, the future value for annual payments. Now if you want to do it monthly, you have to change a little bit, not too much. Just look down here. So what we're going to do is change the periods. And all you have to do now, since it's in monthly, we're not using years, but periods. So this is this cell up here, B3 times 12. 
40 times 12, so 480 periods. And the interest rate, we need to figure out what that's going to be monthly instead of yearly. The yearly interest rate is 5%. But what is the monthly compounded interest rate? And I'm going to zoom in and explain how to get that. It is simply 1 plus the yearly interest rate raised to the power of, that's what a little caret is, 1 divided by 12, and then you subtract that entire thing by 1. Now the 12 here are simply the periods within a year, so it's 12 months. And if it were semi-annually, change it accordingly. But that's what it means. So 1 plus 5% raised to the power of 1 divided by 12 months, and then minus 1. That gives you the rate. So then, the other thing I did, I left the starting amount the same, but your deposit, I'm assuming now, you're not going to have 1,500 to deposit every month, but you're going to have 1,500 divided by 12 to deposit every month. So I'm assuming you make the same amount throughout the year. Now with those assumptions out of the way, we've got these formulas here. So it's same future value formulas, just different uh, interest rates. And that's how you use the future value function to calculate how much you're going to have in a certain amount of time. If you want to adjust this, say, for a semi-annual, you can do the same thing. 40 would just become 80. And the interest rate you would adjust for getting uh, two payments throughout the year. So that's the basics of it. And if you want to get this spreadsheet to follow along or just get the formulas from it, Go to teachexcel.com and you can check out this tutorial and get the spreadsheet you see here.